So we officially made it and uh, we're about to walk into the stadium. Saguaro's gonna play South Point and um, I'm still sticking with my pick of Saguaro. I don't know what the flipper flopper uh, center camera's gonna do. And I know that Ralph is, uh, I'm pretty sure Ralph's picking Saguaro too, but I don't know what to all three games, just so that you have it on there. I don't know who to pick, so I'm going against you two, all three games. Okay, Perry, so Ralph's gonna be paying for a lot South of dinners Point. tonight, so. We got Perry, we got South Point, we got Centennial. Early predictions, let's go through the three games real quick. Uh, Saguaro versus South Point. Well, I know South Point's got a big crowd behind us. They've got home field yeah, advantage. Yeah, for the neutral yeah. side. <laughs> hey, they cry every year that it should be down here. They get their chance, they showed up. But unfortunately, I think Saguaro, they've been here. The drive for five continues. I've got them winning 24-21. Ooh, okay. Since I don't think it's the main event, I'm going to go with uh, the 6A state championship first. Uh, Chandler Perry, what do you think? Oh, it is the main event. But, I, you know, hey, Chandler's been there, done that. They're healthy. They're hitting on all cylinders. I think it's going to be a shootout. Last team with the ball. I got Chandler winning this football game 49-41. Finally, what I think is the actual main event, the heavyweight battle. Centennial <laughs> versus Notre Dame prep. What do you think? You know, uh, Centennial championship game. They go hand in hand. It's like death taxes and eating too much on Thanksgiving. Centennial wow. will be here. They know how to play. The new kids on the block. Are you old enough to remember the oh, new kids on man. the block? Notre Dame prep. Their offense is sexy, but defense wins championships. Centennial wins this football game 28-17. Real quick, I, I need I need to know who your picks are for the, for these championship games. Let's start okay. off with the 4A, obviously, because that's about to start. Saguaro versus uh, South Point. What do you think? South Point, Steve. Uh, I'm gonna go with South Point. Get the Lancers. Uh, I'll go 28-21. Dang, with B2K. Okay. Yes, sir. What about Chandler versus Perry? Yeah. What do you think about that game? You know what? I'm crazy. Not the first time or you know the oh, last goodness. time they're gonna call me crazy. As you well know, I like the underdog. I'm on the Perry Puma bus. So put me oh, down. Wow. Puma Nation. Uh, shootout, 45-43. Okay, now finally, what I think is the heavyweight matchup, yes, the classic. main event, the 5A state championship game, Centennial versus the boys from North Scottsdale, Notre Dame Press. My head says- Undefeated. 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 My head says Centennial. My heart says Notre Dame. I think it's going to be a classic. 38-35, final minute. Field goal by Centennial to win it. So what do you think? Uh, let's start off with this uh, 4A state championship game. Uh, Saguaro versus South Point. What do you think who's going to win? It's going to be a tough game. Um, Saguaro's tough. They've always been tough all year. Uh, I've never seen South Point play, so we'll see how it works out. So you're going to so you're going to take Saguaro, huh? Probably right now, yeah. Okay. All right. So what do you think? 6A. We're going to jump to the 6A real quick. Chandler versus Perry. Who do you pick to win? Chandler's tough. Chandler's been tough. Um, you know, I've watched Perry play a few years, a few of these games this year. It's going to be real close. It's going to be an OT game. It's going to be an OT game. So who are you taking? I'll take Perry. You're taking Perry? I'm shocked. I'm shocked. You're the second person. All right. So finally, the heavyweight matchup, the biggest game of the of the day, Centennial versus Notre Dame Prep. Centennial's been here three times in the last three years. So in, in 5A, now in 5A and 6A, um, I'm going Centennial. I need to know. I need to know who are your picks today. Uh, let's start off with the 4A game. We got Saguaro versus uh, South Point. Yeah. Uh, this tough two-tone South Point team. Yeah. What do you think? You're putting me on the spot. I'm gonna go with Saguaro. I just think the drive. Is too strong. This team is too talented. I think South 
my defense is gonna put up a fight, but I'm gonna give it to him. Hey, you gotta, you gotta go with what you know. Let's talk about Chandler versus Perry. What do you think? Another great game. I think it's gonna be much closer than what we saw the first time around. This is a different Perry team. But once again, I'm gonna be boring and pick the favorite, Chandler. They're too talented, they're too deep. You're not stopping the Wolves, they're going for the repeat. All right, so finally, the main event, we gotta talk about Centennial versus this undefeated Notre Dame prep team who puts the N and the D in undefeated. What do you think? Yeah. Hey, Notre Dame has had a phenomenal, phenomenal year. Oh, wow, I didn't know that, I didn't know that. So, talk to me, I know you got some cool things going on, yeah. uh, this cool TV show, yeah. a little bit about it. Yeah, AZ Prep Spotlight, check us out on Twitter, we're a brand new high school show we run all season long, airs every Sunday night on Fox Sports Arizona, and we cover all sports. Everybody, we're looking for your stories, so tweet us uh, at AZ Even badminton, Prep. even badminton yeah, and swimming. Absolutely. Yes, we cover both this year. Before kickoff, Let's talk about this 4A game. We got Ready? Saguaro versus South Point. Who is your pick? My pick, I think Saguaro goes five for five, man. I, I picked Saguaro too, so I can't really argue with that. All right, and then we're gonna jump up to the 6A. Let's talk about Chandler Perry. Is right. it gonna be a re is it gonna be a replay of what we saw earlier this season? Um, I think it's gonna be a closer game. Um, you know, obviously, I think Chandler is the favorite coming into this. I think they have one of the best defenses in all of 6A. Uh, but it's so hard to beat the same team twice. I think Perry, on the defensive side, is starting to play their best football, and you can never count out Rockford. Okay, fair enough. So you're taking, but you are sticking with Chandler. To win that game. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Now let's jump to the main event. What I think is the main event of the day: Centennial versus this undefeated Notre Dame team. What do you think? Uh, it's going to be a slugfest. It's going to be a hell of a game. I, I don't know if he's going to win that one. That, that one is just so wide open. So many. They're so similar, and that's, that's what I love about that game. So that one's going to be a fun one. Give me uh, Notre Dame. Zero after a quarter. Um, are you surprised? Uh, I mean, South Point's defense has been carrying them for much of the year, eight points a game. So they, they've been showing up throughout the season. Uh, Saguaro, though, I think their offense is going to find their way. I think Max is going to settle down. He's been a little. It's the first quarter of the state championship. Still picking South Point in this game. So oh wow. We'll see though. I mean, going against 38 straight regular season victories. Um, it's tough, but they got a great running back, B2K. He hasn't gotten loose yet, but. You know, I mean, he's been held to like two yards of carry so far. So, Saguaro, he's been doing everything right right now. So far, so good for Saguaro, but we'll see what happens. So Saguaro leads South Point, 14 to nothing. How did Saguaro get those two scores? Well, after a 0-0 first quarter, Chili, 
So all offensively started to pick it up. Logan Petty John with a quick pitch and go. Max Massengill with a beautiful deep ball pass to him. Logan Petty John with a touchdown putting Swirl up 7 to 0. Now after that, Swirl capitalized off the only turnover in the game. Subway threw an interception to Swirl safety Josiah Bradley, Mr. Do It All player for the Sabercats. And Josiah Bradley had a pretty massive return there. And then Swirl offensively inching all the way down to the one yard line where Mass, Matt, Max Massengill punched it in for about one yard, 14-0 all Swirl here. All right, Cody, so what are you expecting in the second half? Second half, I'm expecting Swirl defense to come out and do exactly what they're doing, and that's dominate South Point. What they're doing, they're shutting down the run lanes for B. John Robinson and Padilla, making it hard for them to find their, find their rhythm right now. And also, in the passing game, they are just completely shutting down South Point's passing game, really, with Ringo and Shivers on the deep. Two lockdown quarters for Swirl. I expect the same thing in the second half. All right, so of course, I got my boy Star Lord, aka Rob Amson, aka uh, Runs Arizona Varsity.com. And, you know, I need to know how does Saguaro get to this point? 14 0. How have they been able to shut down B. John Robinson, aka B2K? Bump, bump, bump. I, I think South Point's play calling has helped Saguaro out a little bit, but the truth is, like, for as young as this defense is, they're the most athletic that South Point's seen all year. So you're not going to be able to rely on just your athleticism. Like, these offensive linemen got to create space. And I was over on the South Point sideline. The linemen, they're frustrated. Like, they know that they're older than the kids they're trying to block. And, uh, and, and you know, they, they got to come out in the second half. They got to be smarter, not just physical. Um, but for the most part, for me, it's the fact that uh, uh, South Point's been a little bit one dimensional. And then on offense, I mean, Saguaro's really. Um, taking advantage of, of maybe two big plays and put them in this situation. They scored off an interception and they scored on uh, Logan Pettigrew. He just got loose. Like, he shouldn't have been that open. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Down the sideline, 36 yard touchdown. It's 14 to nothing. It should probably be 7 to nothing right now, but even then, it doesn't feel that close because South Point hasn't got, got it going offensively at all. Hey, man, I know I see you put it on your Twitter that you talked to me. What, what, what does this Saguaro family mean to you? I mean, it means a lot. You know, definitely uh, my, my four years in Saguaro. Uh, met the world and you know did a lot of great things and it's just a tradition that runs deep you know a lot of guys a lot of alumni uh, guys that are playing the NFL now and guys playing in college always find a way to make it back so uh, tradition is deep and you know it's definitely a family, <coughs> a family program. You never miss an opportunity to come watch them play to get out to a practice and I know I know your schedule is super busy superstar college player like how, how do you make that extra time like what did Mons do for you that makes you do that? Well, Coach Mons has been my coach since I was in the fourth grade, and, um, you know, he's like a father to me, father figure to me, and, um, you know, he's always done so much for my life, and definitely for me as a football player, and so I always make time to, to come back and see these guys, and because I know how much it meant for when the older guys come back and see me play, so just to be out here and to support them uh, means a lot. Now, I see you got them Yeezys on your feet. I see <laughs> I see how you super yeah. stunting on yeah. them Already. with them bread Yeezys. Yeah. Uh, what, else, what else is in your closet? Um, a lot of Yeezys, a lot of Adidas. We're Adidas school, so I always stay strapped with Adidas. Oh, convenient. Yeah. Got to. Got to. Supreme or big? Supreme. Oh, okay. Sir, my man. You. My man doing that thing. Yes, I know you got that Louis Supreme collab in your closet somewhere. And I'm going to troll you on Instagram, find out where it is, post up some of these pictures. <laughs> got you. South Point finds, finds themselves down 21 to 7. What's it going to take for South Point to come back 
versus the Warrior team that has just found the hunger to score. Well, South, what South Point needs to do is make a play. They can't just force three and out. Like, they have to make up for one of these two turnovers they have by going and getting the ball. So it's going to fall to Chris Aguirre in this defense, out for ass. Someone's going to have to make a play. That's what it comes down to. When is B2K going to get loose? That's just it. You can only contain him for so long. Remember, they were down 14 nothing last week at Sunrise Mountain. And that's when he really started to break free. And so uh, I, I think you can only contain him for so long. We'll see if that kickoff return woke them up. Yo, man, what does it mean to you watch your team go and get their fifth in a row? Hey, this, is that, this is a the foundation right that here. you helped build. Hey, it's the Swarl tradition. Any, any person that comes to Swarl, this is what you're going to do. You're going to end your year with the ring. This is how it goes over here, man. We do it. We do it big out here, man. I ain't got my rings on right now, but I got enough to show y'all. <laughs> what, what is it over here at Swarl? What, what do they put in the Gatorade, in the Gatorade jugs, in the water? Hey, it's just that hard work we do behind closed doors, man. Every day, getting up early, grinding, man. It's preparing me for college, too, so we get you to the next level. Hey, how's all the surgeries and stuff? I know you had a couple of them. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, both hips are straight now. I'm doing my therapy every day, so I'll be ready for next season. Arizona high school team is going to blame you for starting this yeah. Saguaro thing because you know, you're the foundation that this started with. Yep, yep. that's how we do. When, when, when's it going to end? How, how many in a row? Just guess. I don't think it's going to end anytime soon, to be honest. We got too much talent, you know. We're just going to keep putting them out. I'm saying at least seven in a row. I'm oh, saying yeah. at least oh, that's seven it. in a row. That's it. We're going to make it 10. Yo, this how, is this how you drew it up, man? Yeah. We're going to win right now. Let's go. You did it, you got your fifth sure. one. You know, what, what's sure. it feel like since it's finally been done? It feels amazing, especially to be a senior and do it. Uh, like, it was great all the other years, but especially to be a senior and have a major key in, in the game, it feels amazing. And you also had some of the guys that laid down the foundation for uh, this fifth championship on the sidelines. Uh, Christian Kirk, Caleb Jarrell, oh, yeah. Donovan Dalton Dub. Um, you know, what's it like seeing those guys come out to watch you play? It's it's just a blessing because they they're from all over the United States, Hawaii, Texas A&M, all the big schools, and they're coming out to support Saguaro, and that's just crazy. Hey, you said that this was all you could think about was this fifth ring. Yep. Now, now that it's here, what do you? How do you feel? I feel just blessed, you know, to be able to go through this program for four straight years and every single year get a ring and just go out on top. There's no better feeling. We don't know what the losing is like, and uh, everyone else is feeling the same way. We're just really excited, really pumped. You know, this program is never going to stop. It's always going to be on top. Who do we look out for next year? Who are some of the guys? Right, Give us some uh, of them dogs. All right, Will. Will number 88. Uh, Connor Sully is always there. Clay Randall. Uh, red, dirty red. Number six. Okay. And Damien Sellers is going to be this spring's hot uh, prospect. We're literally going to get SEC offers everywhere to be the same. Okay. What's the first thing you're going to do once you get off the bus and get back home? Uh, I'm, I need to go eat. And then after that, I'm going to, you know, go out with the boys. Didn't y'all just eat? Yeah, but I think we're still hungry. <laughs> How are you going to follow this path that Max has set for you? Well, Max has been a great quarterback at Sora. He's taught me a lot of things, and I just want to carry out the legacy that the, the guys before me have uh, put down. <laughs> From underdog to top dog, how are you able to take this fight to this bigger uh, South Point team? Well, that was it. We uh, we talked about it uh, the last two weeks that it was going to be a fist fight, and we need to be prepared to get get our nose bloody. And uh, you know, we needed to be able to compete and try to win the line of scrimmage. Defensively, we played our we played our hearts out. Uh, we, we we went toe to toe with those guys up in the line of scrimmage. Our linebackers made a ton of plays. Uh, we didn't give up any big plays in the pass game. We didn't let Dijon rip off any runs. Uh, I really thought we forced them out of the things that they want to do. 
coaches to be able to run the ball, you know, 50 times. We, we, we put them behind the sticks, put them behind on the scoreboard, and force them to throw it a little bit more than they want to. So our kids, you know, they, they answered the call. And then offensively, you know, we knew that we needed to be balanced. We needed to protect the football. And we needed to take shots when they presented themselves. And we took some shots and we made big plays. And that's what you got to do against a team that's as good defensively as South Point. Now, I know you're not one to live in the past. You don't talk about your uh, past rings and stuff like that. But I know you have a favorite one. And I know you're currently wearing one. Which ring are you wearing right now? Man, I'll tell you what. This is the four-peat ring. Uh, okay, so you wore the last one. Proud, proud of the four-peat. Uh, I probably, you know, it's hard to say, man. I mean, the, the first one for me as a head coach was really special. Uh, we lost Tug, our equipment manager that year. You know, I lost my dad the year before. And uh, that, that one meant a lot as a head coach, especially because I got engaged on the field right, uh, right, after right. that game. So that, that one brings back some pretty special memories. But I'll tell you what, there's not one of these championships that, that feels better than any other one. They're, they're, they all feel the same. And that's, that's why we keep coming back here, because it, they feel so good. You don't get tired of this. You, you know, it's it's like a it's like a junkie or an addict, right? Like an adrenaline junkie. Absolutely. Once, you, once, you, once you've been here and you've experienced the the, the thrills of winning these, you never want that feeling to end. You want to get back there every year. Max Massingale, uh, your senior starter, your quarterback, your guy, uh, 3,000 yards passing, almost 700 yards rushing, uh, two touchdowns today on the ground, two through the air. Player of the year? My, I, I said that he should be player of the year yesterday on, on the Periscope. Player of the I, year I love it. I, I, love, I haven't heard anybody say that. I, I saw a list of like 50 guys and he wasn't on there. As, as lost all his linemen. Me away, yeah. I mean, yeah, look at, let me look at it. He, he lost four out of his five offensive linemen. Three of them were Pac-12. Lost a Pac-12 tight end. Had four brand new starters up on the offensive line. And uh, got better. And got better. Threw, threw for, you know, I don't know what the final stats are, but close to 3,500 yards. Rushed for just under 1,000. Uh, was over 71% completion with a brand new offensive line in front of him. Um, and led a team full of young players. Uh, elevated his game a ton. If he's not at least in the discussion, it's a crying shame. Not much of a thriller, not much of a surprise. Uh, South Point very good with their... Uh, Two head running backs uh, in Padilla, the athlete, and Bijan Robinson, B2K, the running back. Um, I think Saguaro's going to be back. I think 2018 is going to be my way too early pick for 2018. Is Saguaro to win again? Um, we'll see what happens.